When I was 20, a friend took me to one of those rumored semi-local lights that appear on a road out of nowhere. This was in Rensselaer, Indiana. We pulled up in my friend's truck, and there's one house on this mile-long road. I'm in the back seat, and his girlfriend is in the front. We park under this tree, and like the story says, immediately the light appears. I'm floored, but my friend isn't having it. He's ready to leave, and I'm just getting started. So I open the door, and we step out. I get on the side of the truck, and we test the light by driving with the headlights off. Surprisingly, the results are all over the place. The light will shift from one side of the street to the other, occasionally changing color. Sometimes it seems the light is getting closer, and sometimes it seems to be moving away, and occasionally it turns off completely. But the only constant is to park under the tree. Then it comes right back. I can tell you that the light at times seemed to be only 100 feet or 30 meters away, so I get cocky and take off at full sprint. My friend is in full panic mode at this point and he's terrified. I'm going as fast as I can on the gravel road and there's a deep ditch on both sides and a patch of woods coming up on my right. I'm running uphill and the light is about 50 feet in front of me. It's white with yellow and blue, too bright to see who's holding it or where it's coming from. I'm starting to get a little panic because I can hear my girlfriend's I could hear my friend's girlfriend behind me screaming my name. The light jets into the woods as I approach. Not at all like it's being carried, but more like on a line. I jump the ditch and barrel into the woods. The trees are thin but thick enough together that I can't see the source. Just light everywhere. The woods are bright and lit up. I stop for a moment to take a breath as my friend's girlfriend gets to me. She's freaking out and we start arguing about why she's following me when I'm running towards the light and the light turns off. Suddenly, I find myself in the middle of these woods with no light. There's no cell phones back then. It's very quiet and that's when I realized I was at the complete mercy of whatever was out there. We both just stood frozen in terror for minutes listening for anything. She broke first with a terrifying scream and I took off running. She was right behind me and we ran down the road laughing and scared back to the truck. When I was around 14 years old, my mother, who's an unmedicated schizophrenic, decided the voices in her head were spirits, so she bought a bunch of books and started experimenting with the occult. This resulted in a lot of activity in the home, all of which was terrifying to me. The worst of it started with a month of sleepless nights, feeling like something was in my closet watching me. It escalated over about a week as the black figure started coming out of the closet and would run at my bed, which would send me running out of the room screaming in terror. The final night of this ordeal, I had a really horrible nightmare about this figure choking me as I lay in bed. And as I woke up coughing and sputtering, the room was hot like a sauna, and all I could smell was hot garbage and vomit, and the vibe of the room was far too still. I felt sluggish and nauseous, and it was enough for me that I asked to move my bedroom to another room in the house after that, and I don't think I even went back in that room before I moved out at 21. I'm 33 now, and even remembering this event scares me and makes me a bit nauseous. I didn't know much about the paranormal at that age, but now that I'm older, I realize that it was quite likely a demon. I have a few encounters that were rather terrifying to me. The first encounter happened when I was about 13, and I'm currently 20. I was laying restless in bed at around 12 a.m. That's when I heard footsteps on our deck just outside my room. I froze in place. It couldn't have been a deer because I didn't hear any hooves. Not a bear because it was in the middle of winter. And a few seconds after the footsteps stopped, I heard this super close growl. It sounded as though it was inside of my room, directly in front of my face. I ran out into the living room and didn't go back into my room for a long while. The next encounter, I was about 17 at the time and just got out of the shower when I felt something stinging on my side. I checked to see what it was and there were three thin scratches on my side that immediately began to welt. Like they were just inflicted as soon as I looked. I wasn't sleeping well for a while after that. The last encounter wasn't long after the scratches healed. I was in a bed, restless because I was too paranoid that something was going to show up. 
I close my eyes and hear voices coming from the corner of my room opposite from me. I open my eyes and I see this semi-translucent, pale, white, humanoid thing huddled up in the corner of my room, its back facing me. I got up and charged at it. As I ran into the wall, the apparition just vanished, and I ran out to the living room and didn't return to my room for quite some time. One of my earliest thoughts from my childhood, I guess I was between four and maybe six, I remember waking up and someone was leading me out of my bedroom and I couldn't turn around. I tried to turn around and look at him and I couldn't even see them. What I do remember though were my parents were on the couch sitting straight up but they were just basically comatose. They were just sitting on the couch and I remember looking at them and it was just like they were not yelling at me for being out of bed. What were they doing on the couch? It wasn't a gray arm, it was more brown. It touched the side of my dad's head and he said, you will now feel pain, and he winced. I don't know from there. I don't remember anything else, really. It was pretty strange. I can remember the colors of the walls, though. I can remember that the books that were open, that they were reading my parents. I don't know what that was. It was kind of a visitation type of thing, maybe. I don't know. I have no idea. It had a scent to it, though, and it kind of smelled like rusted machinery. Almost they smelt like rust and that's all I could smell in my nose. It was a long time ago, but clearly it was so scary like I couldn't even turn around. I was trying to turn around to look and see what was behind me. It smelled like rot, just something that it doesn't sit right. Like it didn't smell right, I don't really know how to explain it. I worked on the barge lines on the Ohio River in the early 2000s. Being the low man on the totem pole, I was left with the ship while it was getting repaired. So just below Pittsburgh in the winter, alone on the ship, I decided to sleep in the captain's room. Just as I was falling asleep on the first night, the covers pulled down and the mattress sank. I was not asleep yet, so I know that I wasn't dreaming. I was so terrified that I jumped from the bed, ran off the ship, in my underwear and socks, into the snow and up the hill to an empty lot. No one was around for miles, and I was terrified until the negative zero weather forced me back inside. The ship was down for repairs, so it was dead quiet except for the river running chunks of ice against the hull. I had electric hooked up, but this was before the cell phone era, so I had to man up, which is impossible to do with frozen testes. I head back to the captain's quarters, and my belongings are thrown out of the room. I spent the next four hours in the galley, eating to stay awake and calm my nerves before the engineer arrived. And then I'm told about the captain that the ship was named for who died four months before I started in that bed. He was found sitting hunched over from heart complications. I refuse to ever work on that boat again. We were taking an evening walk with our dogs at a local mountain. And as we pulled up, I noticed what I thought was a guy watching us from the bushes on the side. So I turned to see what I could see in the mirror, and it was not there. But to our surprise, it hadn't moved away, but was still turning and pointing away and stopping to stare at us. I actually went to the spot where it was standing, and there was an eerie feeling and a smell I've never smelled before. Almost like a cinnamon type of smell, I think? I personally am still back and forth trying to figure this out, and the one night it was spying on me again from behind a rock. I went over to take a look knowing what I saw hadn't moved, but it was gone which I don't understand. There is a lot of strange activity there every night and I'm really hoping you guys can help me shed some light on this for me as I can't get rest until I know more. I have many pictures, some of which are enhanced for more detail, but the best pictures are actually screenshot from a video footage I took as I felt footage is the best to capture demons and other strange things. I had an experience in the Angelina National Forest in Texas. We were camping at a remote campground in an RV. There were only about eight camping spots where we were. It was about a mile, mile and a half from the ranger station during New Year's weekend. On Sunday morning, the day we were scheduled to go home, the RV would not start. We got no cell reception because of the tail, because of the tall, heavily wooded area. 
My significant other told me to walk up to the ranger station to see if we could borrow some tools or see if they knew of a mechanic in the area that worked on RVs. So, took our dog and off I went. About a third of the way there, I got a funny feeling. Kind of like I was being watched. And then my dog, which is a pit boxer mix, started growling and sniffing the air. He had all his hackles up. I heard a couple of huge snaps of woods to my left, and the dog is now growling like he is about to tear the let off something. Then came this huge, loud roar, scream from the same direction I had heard the branches snapping. It was so loud I could feel it as well as hear it. When that happened, my dog hunkered down and pissed with his tail between his legs. I yelled, run buddy, run, and we started running. A few more limbs snapped and my dog tried to hunker down again. So I decided, so I decided to scoop him up in a fireman's carry and get the hell out of there. Well, that didn't last but a few yards because he weighs close to 50 pounds and I'm just a 50 year old woman. Thank goodness about that time, here comes the rangers in a pickup. They stopped and I literally threw my dog in the back and told them I needed help. I tried to explain to them about the wood snapping and the loud roar, but it seemed to piss them off. So I just told them that we needed tools. Our RV was broke down. So they drove back to the ranger station and loaded up a toolbox and took us back down to the RV. We finally got the thing started and I told him about what had happened and asked him if he had heard anything. He said he thought he heard something but was too busy to pay attention to mind. Now I have been camping all of my life and I know what a buck deer or elk sounds like and I know what a mountain lion or bobcat or wolf or coyote sounds like. I know what wild hogs sound like, but this was none of those things. This cry was loud enough to shake the ground. I have had that dog for 10 years and I have never seen him that scared of anything ever. And he has even chased down raccoons, armadillos, possums, and deer. And an 800 pound steer and never backed down. So what he smelled and sensed was bad enough to make him hunker down and piss himself. I grew up in the swamps of southeastern Oklahoma, below the Kiamichi Mountains, in the same swath of swampland that spans all the way down through Arkansas into Louisiana. We had 160 acres of cow pasture that ended where the swamp pine forest began. One day after school, me and two of my friends were back there playing in the creek that ran along the tree line. We looked up and saw a herd of deer coming towards us along the tree line. They saw us in the creek, but kept coming. They ran past us once they got close, and we gave chase. Three young boys kept up with the herd of deer long enough for them to cross the neighbor's fence into his pasture. This was my first inkling that something weird was going on. The deer slowed down but kept going along the tree line. My two friends crossed the barbed wire fence and gave chase again. I was husky, so I got stuck in the fence and was left behind. Once I got loose and crossed over, I looked up to see my friends far across the field, still chasing the deer. It then occurred to me, why aren't those deer going into the forest? I hung up by the fence and my friends eventually gave up on the deer and began heading back my way. I was just standing there, looking around at things, waiting. I looked down the tree line again to see my friend's progress and see a black shape leaning out of the trees between me and my friends. It was there for two seconds, and then it leaned back into the trees. My adrenaline instantly off. My adrenaline instantly kicked off. One of my friends was over six feet already at that age, and he had had a, on a black t-shirt. So for an instance, I thought I was seeing him. And then I realized that both my friends were walking beside each other, further down the tree line. And the next second, it occurred to me how big the black shape was. And that it had been the reason the deer would not flee into the forest. Whatever it was, it was huge, bigger than the small black bears that would pass through from time to time. It has always haunted me. A year or two later, I was walking the trail that circled through our land. Our land had a large hill in the center with a grove of bodark trees bunched together on top. The trail went through the grove, and as I walked through the grove and came around the bend, I came upon a dead cow beside the trail with its back to me. Not an out-of-ordinary thing on a cattle farm, so I went up 
to scope it out so I could let my father know what I had found. There was blood. Blood on the grass and blood pooled beside the cow's throat. The blood was still fresh, liquid, and the cow's throat was ripped up, like pulled apart. Again, my adrenaline kicked off immediately. I ran through all the snares of what could have caused this. No wildlife around that area could have done it, except maybe a cougar or a very, very large bobcat. But the cow's flesh didn't look eaten or cut by teeth or claws. It looked pulled apart like by hands, and it was fresh. Whatever had done it was still around, watching me. I could feel it watching me. I grew up fetching duck eggs out of snake ponds and camping my, out by myself in the woods. I don't have much fear of nature, but those two times tapped into my primal fear. I have never felt that way, and I will never feel that way again because I am never going into those woods. It was 1982. I was seven years old, and I have vivid memories of the police. Eddie Money and John Mellencamp on the radio, which, oddly enough, sort of puts a pin in my memory experience. My parents were apartment managers, and it was moving day in, into our new manager's quarters. It was almost a double-sized apartment, an apartment attached to the office. Me, my younger sister, and brother were given what amounted to half of the apartment as our own. While the adults were moving everything from the truck into our house, I sat alone in a large room under a window. It was the early part of the day, I want to say like 9 a.m., I was staring into and messing with a funky shag carpet when I saw someone lean into the doorway. So I could just make out the upper torso area, and then it leaned back out. I glanced over quickly, assuming it was one of the adults peeking in to check on me or whatever. I really didn't think anything of it. A few seconds later, I saw the figure lean in again. I turned my head quickly into the doorway and again nothing. The second time felt a little different, almost like whatever it was was trying not to be seen. Something in my young mind told me to stare at the carpet and try to focus, but not focus on my peripheral. So I stared down at the floor and sure enough, this thing leaned back into the doorway, and out of the corner of my eye I could make out what looked like a man in his late thirties, wearing a denim jacket with black scruffy hair and weird black eyes. The whole thing had a weird dark look to it, and my mind may have filled in some of the details in that moment, but I had this memory seared into my brain. It freaked me out, like, what the hell is that? I sat there and side-watched this thing for what felt like an eternity, but was probably only just a few seconds. Over the next several years, I had very similar experiences. It was almost like this thing followed me, and I kind of expected to see him from time to time. After a while, I didn't think about it and I never saw it or him again.